we as business owners and up and coming entrepreneurs have a network and have a space that we can grow from. Um, and so that's why we want to continue to bring you guys these classes and these workshops. Uh, Food for Thought is the platform that we'll be doing that through. So every single month we'll be doing different classes. This time we have Mr. Fox Pena on with us. He will be talking to us about credit restoration and the building of business credit. Uh, he's been in the game for 26 years. He's had franchises. Uh, Fox is very much so goes against the grain and knows things that your average credit restoration or credit repair person wouldn't know. And so if you know me, you know, I always get really good gems and I want to make sure that I'm sharing that with the people, Evelyn as well. Um, and so I'm going to have him introduce himself. After he introduces himself, we're going to run a quick poll that you guys will take and then we'll jump right into the presentation. So Mr. Fox. Hey, what's happening, y'all? So listen, my professional name is Fox Pena. As she mentioned, I'm doing this about 26 years. Um, not only credit restoration and funding, but my foundation is in real estate and in fast food franchises. So um, what I bring to the game is a little something different because I have, you know, my business acumen and it goes, it predates the internet. There's a lot of internet millionaires who have never been face to face with people. You know, I made my first million um, the old fashioned way, brick and mortar, dealing with customers face to face. It's like, it's a whole different animal. So I bring that to the game as well as, you know, the e-commerce space and doing business anonymously online. Um, so, you know, I want to share what I bring to the table tonight and hopefully y'all find value in it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Fox. And without any further ado, we are going to run our first poll. If you guys see that poll come up on your page, this is just to test your knowledge. So we know who we have in the room and what you guys know. So if you see that poll pop up, you can just answer those questions. Hey, so the, the poll results popped up, not for us to choose the options. Again? <laughs> it's all right. On my end, it's, it's showing different. Hold on a second. No, it was fine. I actually had all the questions um, on there. Yeah, what I saw like was not results. Just so y'all know, what I saw was actually questions. Just so y'all right. know. Yeah, the questions, oh, yeah, with the yes or no. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, yeah. back up now. Okay. Are you able to take it? And I mean, I can't take mm -hmm. it, but I get it. <laughs> I yeah. let everybody else flourish. <laughs> oh, because you're a host. You're a host. <laughs> ah, right, 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 right. Technology boy. Right. All right. So we asked some questions about, can you apply for business credit without an official entity? Do collections fall off your credit report when you pay them? Can you use your personal credit as a guarantor for your business credit? What do they look at when approving you for credit or funding? Just want to get an idea of what you guys already know. May, may I tap in real quick? Tap on in. <laughs> I, I want to just say something real. I want to keep it real with you. I am so impressed with the both of y'all for Thank real. You. Thank you. I, I mean that sincerely. Thank <clears throat> you. Y'all touched on a question here that's so controversial because can you apply for business credit without an entity? Nine out of 10 people will say no. You can't. Right. Right. And so will the bank. But right. the answer is, I just want people to know right now, you actually can. It's in special circumstances. And I will touch that when I get into it. We can actually get into it right now. Okay. Everyone has done the poll. So I'm going to, you guys don't see it anymore, right? No, it's gone. Good. So without further ado, we are going to get started with tonight's presentation. This presentation is going to be question heavy. We don't have many people, but I could ask 500,000 questions. Let, let's do it. The content will be here and we'll share it as- Exactly um, right. Home. Don't get me started. Once you record the content, it's gold. That's it. Uh, <laughs> All right. So Mr. Pena, take the floor. All right. So let me just address this right off the top. And again, I don't like, uh, it's hard for me to like talk about myself and my accomplishments, but it's necessary for people to understand who's speaking. So at this point in my life, I have banking relationships. So when we apply for credit for a client, we're not like sitting behind the computer and waiting for a response. You know, we're dealing directly with upper management and with the underwriters. Because if there is a problem, we want to know why and we want to correct it. So we don't want to be sitting around seven to 10 days 
waiting for a form letter that just basically says you got denied. So I'm going to I have a whole presentation, but I want to touch this right now because I will forget. So generally speaking, when you apply for business credit, you're using your EIN number. So your EIN number is what's attached to your entity, which is a corporation or an LLC. And that number acts for all intensive purposes as your social, but you still need your social security because you're going to have to personally guarantee real money, right? The little money you don't have to. So what happens is what in a bank is that when banks are eager to loan money and smaller units are like credit unions, they'll say, look, if you don't have an entity, you know, don't spend the extra money. Just go ahead and get a DBA and we'll use your social security number for the entity as well as to pull your credit to see your worthiness. So the answer to that question is you can actually get funding. Now, I have a personal relationship with American Express. So American Express handles my clients with kid gloves. You know, they go out of their way, but they make big money off my people. So, you know, what I'm saying they go either way. They make people feel special, but they will do that for me. They're like, look, if your people don't have an entity, but they have a real business, that's it. Just send the name and the number. So American Express provided me with a link. You know, uh, I give my people that link. They fill it out. So I wanted to touch on that, that yes, it is possible, but you will hear that it's not. And that's OK. People are not generally wrong when they say it can't be done, but it can. So we got that out the way. Thank you for that. I wish I knew that a week ago, but. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. So listen, I want to say something else, too, since we talking. Right. I just want to say to people, because the people on here and the people who will watch us in the future are obviously people that are interested in business. And I want to. I want to say the importance of relationships in business, because the reason I'm here. Is because I was invited by these two gracious young ladies, but one of these young ladies has already broken bread with me, which means she already spent some money. She already put her money where her mouth is. So when she invited me to do this, of course I'll say yes. You understand? So that's the power of relationships. And you could take that from entry level all the way to the top. I want, I want people to understand that. Uh, because- that further. Yeah, because, I, you know, in, in, in all honesty, right? The way I do business at my level of the game is if somebody invites me to speak, boom, they get my management. Then my management goes crazy with contracts and pricing and this what he want. And, and that's just the game because I've been doing it so long. So relationships cut all that middle stuff out. We were talking directly and here I am. So boom, I just wanted to share that. So here we go. Okay. I got my notes in front of me. <laughs> so credit, let's talk about credit. So your personal credit file, is super, super important when it comes to business credit because the bank or whatever organization is going to lend you money, they need a point of reference. You know what I mean? They need receipts. Like, what are you talking about? How, how long have you been paying people back that we could reference? So having a, a clean age, having a, uh, hang on, I'm sorry. Grayson, get that. That's going to look real good when y'all re replay this. So Having a, a clean credit file is very important, right? But it's not just score. So I have clients that have like a prepaid Capital One card and a Best Buy card, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hang on one second. All right, I apologize. Y'all hear me? Yeah? Okay, so um, where was I? I lost my train of thought there. Mm. Your credit profile. What's pre -paid, pre -paid and a best buy credit card. Right, so, right, so thank you. So I have clients that have like a Capital One prepaid and a Best Buy card, right? They've been paying it for two years. Their scores are 720, 730. So they like, Fox, I'm lit. I'm ready for funding. It, you're not. You're going to get denied for everything. You might even get denied for personal credit cards because it's just not enough 
history is just not enough reference. So I'm gonna present to y'all exactly what the banks are looking for right now, and then I'll give you the inside. I'm gonna do a lot of juxtaposition between what the uh, social media has been telling us for years and what the real deal is. So first thing when it comes to your personal credit profile is data points. The banks look for 12 data points and we're gonna run through them. So the first thing is your personal information. When a bank opens up your credit profile and they see you got three, four different names, I want everyone listening to know that's not your fault. As you go through life and you apply for credit, you have people inputting your information out to the world who don't care nothing about you. So if they misspell a name or put junior when you're actually a senior or whatever, they misspell Johnson, some is with a T, some ain't got the T, some ain't got the H, that goes on your file forever. So the first thing you want to do is start with personal information and you want to clean up the personal. So you, you need one name. That's it. Cross the three. Then same thing goes for your address. If you have 10 addresses on there, which is common, that's telling the bank, okay, there's no stability here. This person jumps around from residence to residence. It's a no-go. So you want to clean that up. So you want one name, you want one address. And of course, same things go for jobs. Credit, um, credit agencies report your job. If you got 10 jobs, you look unstable. Now, how do you do that? The quickest way to do that is you call the bureaus yourself and you tell them, this is what I need. Now, a company like mine, we could do it, but it's not going to be overnight because we're third party. They know we're third party and we're going to request that. It could take 30 to 60 days. You can cut an hour or two out of your life for three days in a row and do it. The reason I say that, the credit bureaus are hard to deal with. You're dealing with people in third world countries who have been trained that they know the law when they know absolutely nothing. They don't even know the language, let alone the law in the United States. And some of them will give you a hard time. So you got to hang up on them and call back. But trust me, it works. So you get that all cleaned up on the personal. Now, as far as what does the credit profile need to look like? Okay, the banks like to see a credit mix. So back to my initial example, if you got two credit cards and you got a 720, the banks aren't interested in that. And if you don't have the items I'm gonna mention, don't get discouraged because I'm gonna tell you how to put it all together at the end. So the banks would love to see, number one, a mortgage. They would like to see some kind of real estate trade line on there, whether it's open or whether it's been paid. They want to see an auto loan. They want to see two credit cards from major banks. So we're talking about Chase, B of A, Wells Fargo. They want to see two of them. They want them to be $2,500 credit limit or above, and they want them to be more than four years old. That's ideal. You can still get some money but to maximize, they want to see four years, okay? Um, the quality of the credit, right? So if you have a mortgage, but the mortgage was a $35,000 mortgage, that's not going to look the same as somebody who has $460,000 mortgage, right? Same thing goes, like I mentioned, major banks. The quality, if you got two credit cards, $25,000, but they're from local credit unions, it just don't hit the way a Chase card would in the eyes of the bank. Another thing for y'all younger folks to take into consideration, and this is real. In my day, we dealt with human beings. Now this is all AI. This is robots pulling everything in one second and yes or knowing you. That's why in my business, it's important that we're dealing direct with bank management and underwriters because we need to talk to someone. We can't just let the robots dictate our future. You know what I'm saying? Because it gets discouraging. So real estate, car note, two major credit cards, um, four years old, 2,500 and up. And now you'll hear that a 680 credit score and 30% utilization, you'll still qualify. You'll hear that on social media a lot. I'm here to tell you there's no way. For example, my plugs at American Express tell me, look, 
don't even bring us nobody who has more than 5% utilization. They want to see between three and 5%. Now, that's at the time of your application. Soon as you get the card, you do what you got to do. My personal suggestion, don't never go above 30% and pay it in one month. But we can't all do that. We can't all do that, especially when you're in business. Sometimes you need to use all your business credit and your personal credit to get over that hump. That's okay. But as long as you know how to get it back, you ahead of the game. And I'll give y'all a perfect example. I have uh, on my personal side, I have a credit card from Navy Fed that's $40,000, right? I don't need to use nothing on my personal. I got super bread on my business, but this particular card gives me 4% back. That's a lot of money. So on 40,000, I get 1,600. So I try to run that two times in a month and just make myself 3,200 for doing nothing. What happens is sometimes I get caught out there and I don't make the payment because remember I'm paying it in full. I don't make the payment by the due date and then my score drops 100 points. So when that happens to y'all, I don't want y'all to get scared like, oh my God, what happened? They give us credit, then they penalize us for using it. So as soon as you pay that back, it goes back up. That example will also show you the importance of business credit because you don't want your score fluctuating all the time and you managing it because that's a whole job. You just want to do everything on the business side, it never shows up on the personal. It never affects your FICO. And that's where you want to be. So I'm going to touch on what your corporation should look like, how to do it, how to do it for free. I'm giving you all the game tonight, all the game. But I'm also going to give you this, Jim. So if you have a 680 credit score, and forget about 30%, I don't even want to use that example. You got a 680 score and your utilization is down, you're going to get some money you're going to get some approvals. They'll probably be between the $2,000 and $10,000 range, right? But if you have a seven fifty dollars and above, you're getting all the money. Every bank's going to approve you. And I'm going to tell you why. Let's say you got this seven fifty, dollars and you wake up one morning, you go into Chase, you go into B of A, you go into Wells Fargo, right? You fill out applications in each. You're going to get Chase. You're probably going to get denied back to back. Why is that? Because Chase is going to pull your credit. Then you're going to walk into B of A. B of A is going to say, hmm, I see a fresh pull right here. They was just at Chase today. So they probably shopping for money. By the time you get to Wells, Wells is going to say, man, we see two fresh pulls. We're not doing it. So the object of the game is to be a patient. You go into Chase one day. You erase the inquiry. Then you go back into the other bank and you're fresh. No one knows you went to Chase. So if you got approved at Chase, you're going to get approved at B of A. Erase the inquiry, Wells Fargo, same thing. That's the play. That's the play. Certain banks don't care about inquiries. Like, again, American Express, because how do you erase the inquiry? By calling the bureaus. Um, and you speak to the fraud department and it's going to come off. All right. And again, I could, I could get into that later. I could get into that. Um, but um, I lost my train of thought again, but 750 and above. Really quick. You guys can put your questions in the chat and then we'll save the answers for the questions for after the presentation. So I'll, I'll manage the chat. You All, right. Just All right, cool. I looked at it and then it threw me up because I like to answer when I see it, but I'm going to. All right. So 750 and above, you're going to get money you're going to get money from everybody so ideally that's where you want to be now in terms of your entity right in terms of here's another one of my pet peeves and i could go on for days and again i want i want people to understand that when i give information i just want people to understand like it's coming from a place of legitimate experience like my two partners in my office are a cpa and an attorney so when i tell y'all a llc is irrelevant just know when you have a cpa it's different than it's just my opinion so an llc to me is irrelevant because it became so popularized 
on social media, but no one understood. People just say LLC business credit and you can get it. But what exactly is an LLC? Nobody could tell you. You know what I mean by nobody, meaning the people who are just mass consuming the information. So an LLC is limited liability company. So it's not a corporation. An LLC in and of itself is what's called by the IRS a disregarded entity. Why? Because the IRS disregards it. So if you have an LLC, I, I did a video on this, got a real client. LLC, you opened it. That's the name of your business. Did your thing. We have a client first year in business. She made $432,000, right? That's hard enough, right? Which that's another one of my pet peeves that people think if you open an LLC, you have a business. You don't, you just have a piece of paper. So 400, and she thought she was eligible for all these tax write-offs. Her tax liability is 136,000. She almost fainted in our office. And there's no way around it. There's no playing game. There's none of that. Once you file taxes and the IRS knows you owe the money, that it's a wrap. Now you could do amendments and whatever, but that's only when you're structured right. So let me explain what happened. So an LLC in and of itself, disregarded entity, right? So the first thing you have to do in an LLC is file to be looked at by the IRS as an S corp. So it's an S election, but that's only step one. So now you're an S election and now you can write off certain things, right? And it's a very simple form. It's no big deal. And it costs you nothing, right? It costs nothing. But this next problem is that an LLC is not activated until you put an operating agreement in and you have a partner. Now, if you like me and you don't need partners, your partner will be another entity owned by you. Now, once you have an operating agreement and you're an S Corp, now you have asset protection. See, because another thing, people get an LLC and they put their rental property in the LLC. There's no asset protection there. There's nothing because the entity's disregarded. It really don't exist. So if you have an LLC single member and you have a business, when you do your taxes, the IRS wants you to do a Schedule C, which basically means you're just self-employed like you have a DBA. They don't even want to see a corporate tax return because an LLC is not a corporation. It's a company. But when they allow you the S yes election, then things get different. So that's my little rant on LLCs. There is nothing special about them. You don't need it unless you're a legitimate real estate professional investor that moves partners in and out. Like you flip houses and you bring in this partner and then you're done with the flip and then he's out. And it, see, an LLC is easy to maneuver people. How it became popularized is when um, real estate caught fire on social media, the hard money lenders require you to have an LLC. So people just thought that was the lick. Why do they require that? Because when they lend you the money, they want to be on the LLC. You're not going to run off on the plug. We don't play that. We're giving you all the money. So we own the LLC. So you don't pay, we take the house. That's where it all stems from. So in real estate, they are very, very valuable. Outside of that, nah, you don't need an LLC for nothing. So what you do is a corporation. Now, corporation, every corporation starts out as a C-Corp. C-Corp, if you run with that, you're going to get hit with double taxation. You're going to get hit with the corporation getting taxed and any money you take is getting taxed. C-Corporations have their place in this world. They're used as holding companies, et cetera. When you open a corp, you want to make sure you file the same document and ask for an S election. That's where you get all the write-offs that people talk about, and I talk about it all the time. So LLC, you need an operating agreement, and you need an S election. Corporation, same thing. It starts off as a C. You want an S election. Now, in reference to what you name your company, if you're interested in business credit, the name is important. They have what's called restricted industries. I'll give you some of them. Restricted industry would be like, let's say, real estate or financial. So if you say 
hey, we're ABC Financial. The bank is like, nope, goodbye. If you say such and such real estate holdings, nope, goodbye. Why? Because in real estate, no part of the down payment can be borrowed. Now, people say to me, yo, fire, I, you know, I've got money off my credit card. I've been blah, 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 blah. You know, I got money from this bank and I bought, yeah, yeah. But you didn't declare that. And I tell them real simple. I say, if you go into a bank, you say, I want to buy a building. They say, no problem. You got perfect credit. You got income. We need 30% down. And then you say, okay, no doubt. I want a second loan. I want you to give me the 30%. So I put, they're going to say, you crazy. You're not doing that. You cannot borrow the down payment. So that's why when the word real estate is in the title, they assume you're going to be asking for money to go buy real estate and then finance, and then that just goes against their banking. But if you can do it, it's fine. You, everybody got to do what they got to do to get where they're going. So that's another thing I want y'all to understand. For every time I tell y'all you can't do this, I have another option because I'm all, I'm pro business. I'm pro, man, listen, let's stop talking. Let's jump in. So you want to make sure the name is right of your, of your entity. You don't want nothing um, that is uh, misinterpreted in any way. Uh, anything that's promiscuous, uh, basically anything. So I'm gonna, just gonna give you the shortcut. So instead of me telling y'all the four or 500 industries that are restricted, I tell everybody this, use the word consultants, use the word enterprise, use the word international. So Fox Pena consultants, that's it. They're not asking no questions. Well, what do you do? We're a consulting company for what? We help small businesses with marketing, with promotion, we negotiate leases. Um, um, you know, we get branding strategy and that's it. Because y'all gotta remember, the banker that's sitting across from you doesn't know anything. What they're doing is two things. They're just building rapport because they, they look at you as a potential customer in the bank. They're building rapport, but they're also fishing for you to trip up. That's what they're doing. So, you answer briefly and then that's it, right? So, um, also when you're choosing a name, there's a website out there called Name Check. I got it right here. Uh, and and the check is spelled C-H-E-K dot com. So you can go and see if there's anyone using the name you like and if they're using it on social media, YouTube, across the board. Why is that important? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. It's important because if you start building a brand and you start to catch fire, like my one client who I mentioned, who first year she did almost a half a million, and then someone's using your name, you're going to get hit with a cease and desist. And that's going to hurt. It's going to hurt your momentum, your ego. It's going to hurt everything. It's going to hurt your spirit for a hot minute. Till you learn, hey, this business, this is how it go. It's not a game out here, you know, but we got to prepare ourselves. So you can check so you don't waste your time, right? Also, when you are starting your entity, you want to get, if you don't have access to a real office, um, you're not at that level yet, or a friend's office, you never want to use a home address because the banks know. They don't even have to inquire if it's a home. As soon as you enter it, they know it's a home. So you would get a virtual office at Regis, or Opus. Both of those have virtual offices that are bank approved. In other words, the bank don't trip. They know it's a professional building. They know what it is. Same thing goes with your phone number. You're going to want to have an official business line. Banks love when you have an 800 number. You could get them for like 10 bucks. Not a big deal. And you just make sure you're, uh, you're aware of the voicemail. In case anybody calls to verify, you know, whatever. You don't want to use your cell number. It's a turn off. Um, now, another thing that's controversial. You see a lot of people on social media saying you could get 50,000, 100,000 business credit without your personal guarantee or without credit or without your social. Again, partially true. You can get credit that you don't need without your social. So an example of that is a gas card. When I was building up one of my corporations in the early days, you know, I'm doing my little 30 day nets and I got a gas card with $40,000 on it, right? But it was a, a 30 day net card. So if I charged up the 40, I had to pay that. And you know, I didn't have a fleet of trucks. I would never use 40,000 in gas. So 
Could I go on the internet and say I could get you 40,000 in business credit? Yeah, technically I could say that, but that, that's not real. You're not getting nothing with a, with a Visa MasterCard logo on there, right? So the play is to have good credit, to have your entity structured correctly. Now, you see people, because the new wave is what I just said. People are like, you don't need nothing. Now people are saying you don't need the 30-day nets. The paid X score don't matter. You just open your entity today and start applying tomorrow. Again, if you have the credit profile, that's technically true. But let me tell you what you're going to miss out on. When you don't build your company and build your paid X score, for those who don't know, paid X score is the business version of a FICO score. So how well does your business pay money back? When you don't build that score, you're going to miss out on things like putting the auto in your business. You're going to miss out on things like fleet loans for multiple vehicles. And one of my favorite plays, you're going to miss out on the Sam's Club card. So Sam's Club has a card. It's a MasterCard. And they give $30,000 if your Paydex score is above 85. Now, this is a legitimate, legitimate play where you really don't use your social. They don't even pull your credit because they don't even have your social. Um, they don't advertise it and you have to walk into a Sam's Club and do it. Now, again, the people working at Sam's Club, they don't care about us. They don't care about credit. They just got a job. So a lot of times they give the wrong application and you're looking at this like, man, this don't look like business. Sam's Club also has their own credit card that you can only use in there, which is great, but we're not in there for that. We want that master card with the 30 racks on it. So when you have your paid X score up and you have all these accounts reporting to your corporation, you will get that card. So for me, it's worth it just for that. You look like you got a question right now. Well, that's why I'm smiling. I got a paid X score. <laughs> okay. That is, is I think, above 80s. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. You can walk right in there and make it happen. Okay. You can walk right in here. A game changer. Let me go look for sure. So a couple other things, right? And the way I do business is I'm grassroots. I don't like nobody spending money. I don't like it, especially when they do business with me. So, you know, my mentorships are a lot of money. Uh, my credit re restoration is very fair. So when I tell somebody a price and they be like, all right, Fox, I got you. Boom. I'm not going to turn around and say, OK, now that we got this, let me tell you what you need to buy now. I need you to get this and get that. No, I'm the opposite. How can I service my client and get it for free? So my suggestion before I tell you these other pieces is get your credit score up high get some credit and then use that credit to continue building. And what you want to do is you want a professional email address. Banks don't like, you know, ABC corporation at Gmail at Yahoo. They don't like that. They don't like that at all. They want to see the name of the company. So you want a professional email, which again, uh, it used to be called G suites. They changed the name, but Google sells professional websites now. So whatever the name of your company is, you buy that domain, they'll give it to you. It's like $6.95 a month, $12 for two, et cetera. The other thing you want is a website. Banks, as you get deeper in the game, they do Google you. They want to see where you at. You need a website, but you don't need it tomorrow. But it's something to consider in the future as you look to get more and more money for banks from banks. Um, what else I got on here? All right, so again, all these lines of credit that I'm discussing from these banks are going to require a personal guarantee. So they're going to pull your credit. So you're going to get an inquiry. Your credit is good. They're going to establish credit, but they're going to make you sign that if anything goes bad, you have to pay it personally. That also gives them the right to go after you personally. So no PG simply means Hey, if I don't, if I don't uh, pay it back, that's it. But let me tell you what happens. You know what I mean? And this was my, when my experience co comes into play. The average person does not know consumer law, banking compliance, or banking laws in this country, which is, you know, they shouldn't because who's teaching it? So what happened is when you don't sign PG and you run it up and then you don't pay back, they're going to send you threatening letters. They're going to tell you they're going to garnish you and they will sue you. Like no one's going to let you just walk away from 200,000. 
But when you go to court, you just tell a judge, I didn't sign personal. And that's it. You walk out. But how many people are going to go into court and fold and say, look, we went bad, whatever, can we work something out? Because they're scared because they're in court. So this is what happens. So the other piece, if you get 100,000 um, with no PG, no personal guarantee, and you ran up the 100 like in, in, in a week, and then you didn't pay, they're going to look to get you on fraud because they'd be like, you had no intention to pay back because of the way you spent it. So these are all things to consider. But across the board, 95% of the time, you're going to have to have a PG, which is fine because people going in business do not have nefarious intentions with the money. Everybody's trying to get some money to invest and, you know what I mean, and bubble up. Um, so back to credit. Your personal credit profile, I don't think I mentioned this, but um, one of the definitions of a clean file is, of course, the data points that I mentioned, you can have any collections, any late fees, any, any late, excuse me, any collections, any lates, any public record, bankruptcy, child support, all that, garnishment and eviction, we get that a lot, we get it off. Um, and I wanna, I wanna put, and no charge off. So I wanna put y'all up on game because I'm in the mood tonight. And this, this is something that we do for clients, but this is outside of restoration, right? So if you live in Illinois, which is um, where I stay most of the time, you know, I will sue the banks for you. I'll sue people, but I can't do it outside of that because the travel, my fee, how much people owe, it doesn't add up, right? If you in Illinois, I'll do it. And also TransUnion is in Illinois and they know, um, that I'm with a law office. So when I tell them I'm going to sue them, TransUnion starts talking about cutting checks because they're right there in Illinois. So they know I'm not playing. But what happens when you have a charge off, right? So let's say, again, I love to use Chase because I have a love-hate relationship with them. Let's say you owe Chase 10000 on the credit card. You couldn't pay it. Boom, they put a charge off on your credit. Charge off means, hey, we wrote this off the books and we 1099 you. So we got a credit for the money. Chase already got a credit. Now they turn around and sell it to a debt collector. The debt collector starts calling you crazy. Then they put a collections on your report. All you have to do is say, listen, what you're doing is 100% illegal. This is charged off. I got a 1099, which is income. So unless y'all want a problem with the IRS, y'all better fall back. And that's 100% fact. Once it's charged off, no one has the right to collect it. No one, because the bank took a credit from the IRS and they hit you with a 1099. Whether you receive the 1099 in the mail or not makes no difference. Because once it says charged off, they charge it off their books to the IRS. So just want y'all to know that. Um, and, <laughs> and um, you know, in reference to what I do personally, um, is I get people uh, their credit situation straightened out as fast as I can. Now, I was known as the 30-day king. I could get somebody's credit, let's say 70, 80% lit in 30 days. Um, those days are gone because during COVID, the three bureaus laid off a whole lot of staff, did not hire more. Social media has made, you know, the credit restoration game into a free-for-all. Everyone does it. So they used to get two, 300,000 letters a month. Now they're getting two, 3 million. That's no joke. So 30 days is not a realistic uh, expectation management. But what I do is I get you in position because we're not cleaning credit um, without a master plan because I come from the lending side. I come from owning a mortgage company. You know, I know how to get the profile right, what to delete, not. I know what's going to take. Um, so, you know, that's what we do. So if anybody needs those services to get in position to get some funding, you know, we'd be happy to help. But, you know, I really came here tonight to uh, to share the knowledge on getting funding because I'm a big advocate of people getting into business. Not a big advocate of talking about it much, just action. You know what I'm saying? So talk to me. Y'all got questions? Well, I'm bursting. With wow. Well, thanks. <laughs> I'm very wow. well, thanks. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Evelyn. No, I was just giving a round of applause because it seems like the, appro the appropriate gesture. Uh, we'll open yeah, that was really good. 
Uh, that was really good, Angie said. Yeah, so um, we're going to open the floor for questions for you guys, even though I have several questions, but I'm going to hold it down. And yeah, if you would like to come off mute and ask a question, you can. Um, and if no one is going to do that, we'll also go through the chat and answer some of these questions. I think one of the first was, how do you erase an inquiry? And the yeah. answer was, call up the bureaus. Yeah. Tell them but, that. Okay, Let me, I'm going to touch that though, because see what happens is, because y'all got to remember something. Before I became who I was, who I am, it was prior to the internet. So when I was at a seminar or something and I got information and I ask questions and I go home and it don't work, where do I turn? There's no, and I can't email the speaker. We could do all that now. So I don't want people to get discouraged because I used to get discouraged ASAP. Like, man, this, this stuff don't work. So when you call the bureau, you want to say, I need to speak to the fraud department. They're going to tap dance on you. That's why I'm saying it's not easy. Expect that. And when you get the next person, you'll waste your life if you don't say this. Is this the fraud department confirmed? And don't say nothing else. Because they might have just transferred you to the homie. And you telling your whole story again. They're like, I can't do nothing for you. Confirm that it's the fraud department. Then you say, I see some suspicious activity on my account. I want to handle it immediately. It, it, you know, I just got an alert yesterday. I did not do it. You have to take it off. They might say, no, we're not doing that. Hang up, call again. You want the same method. You want to say, listen, you cannot furnish this without my written consent. Where is my written consent for you to furnish this inquiry? At that point, they're supposed to take, they still could say no. Because the bureaus are billion dollar gorillas owned by the bank. The bureaus want you to think that banks, big banks sit around all month just waiting to report your credit. Like, oh, we got a good little, good little patient here. They paying on time. No. Banks don't have no time for that. Courts have no time for that. That's how I get bankruptcy and child support off. They don't report. People think there's three bureaus. There's 350 data reporting bureaus, and they're all out to get you. Real talk. So the banks actually own the bureaus. So you got to be patient. It will work. This is your life. It will work removing inquiry. So a little bit of patience. It comes off. You go to the next bank. Beautiful. Okay. So next question was, uh, how can we check our business score? Okay. Yeah, so, I think that was the paid ex, uh, I forgot yeah, the name. So two ways, two ways. If you don't know how to check your business score, you probably don't have one. Meaning the only way to get business credit is you need what's called a DUNS number, D-U-N-S. So okay. you go to Dun and Brad I have that. <laughs> right. You go to Dun and Bradstreet, you get your DUNS number. And when you have an application, that's what you're providing for them to report. The other, the other um, company that'll do it is called NAV, N-A-V.com. What I, now, Dun & Bradstreet is free. They try to upsell you, but it's generally free. NAV don't play. NAV is $29.99 a month, but in return, NAV will report positive, um, a positive trade line to your business. So it's fair. I don't like nobody spending money, but it's fair. They're taking some money mm -hmm. and they're giving you some value. Nav is really helpful too. Like if you call yeah. them, give you information on like mm -hmm. what you need to fix, why this didn't yeah. report by this yeah. vendor. And and as they should, because they're charging a premium. So yeah. I respect right. it. It's a, it's a mutual relationship. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Uh, let's see. I just checked mine. So yeah, there is, I'm telling y'all, I don't know everything, but I know more than what was said tonight. Like credit is a very dense topic. Um, so there's a lot more that I'm pretty sure Mr. Pena has in his mm -hmm. belt. Um, we are going to send the recording of this in email as well as um, information so that you can follow up after this if you guys had questions if you want to sign up so that you can get some credit restoration or support in getting funding for your businesses um i'm let me see if i have any questions i mean you already know my got, um, you know my ills I, oh someone else has a question so yeah my fault um 
I had a question you mentioned earlier about like the address thing, right? So yeah. I have a virtual address, but I also have my, my company is a sweet potato pie making company. So okay. I congratulations. My, thank you. Um, I have my home address as a pickup location, right? Okay. So it gets a little tricky when it comes to using my actual home address in certain places because it's like I don't want to send people to 99 Hudson Street and you, you know what I'm saying? There's no yeah. So, like, what would you recommend or advise for that? Yeah. Let, let me clear that up for you real quick. When I say never use your home address, I'm talking about at the secretary of state when you file your entity. Because what happens when you apply for business credit, first thing they do, boom, they go right to the secretary of state. And they want to see that your entity is active, right? Because a lot of people open up a corporation, LLC, they let it go two years because they kind of forget. Then they jump in the game. It's inactive. So the bank wants to see that while they're there. They check the address. So as long as your virtual business address is on the secretary of state, you have no problem. None. Um, once we submit that, is there a way to change it? Yes, absolutely. It's thirty five dollars. You just hit up the secretary mm. of state, tell them what your intention is. They send you the form, either email or fax. I know fax is ancient, but they still use it. Yeah, it's, it's fairly simple to get it changed. Thirty five dollars in New York anyway. Got it. Really quick. Can I just ask one question? Maybe I'm related or not. But with the LLC, if I open it in one state and then I move to another state, do you know it's what fine. would be the best? It's I was going to say, yeah, because I, I was trying to figure out, I'm like, am I paying taxes in New York and Ohio? Because the LLC was, you know, formed in Ohio. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to break that down. So it, it's not even complicated. I'm just going to give you both sides. If you are legitimately doing business meaning let's say like this brother said he has the potato pie company right sweet potato mm -hmm. pie. so let's say you're manufacturing in ohio you're manufacturing sweet potato pie the address is there the ingredients are there you know the suppliers are there but you living in new york nobody has to know that because the entity as of 1913 is a living breathing human being it don't need you so you just don't complicate things. Now, if we're talking about the entities in Ohio, but we're in the e-commerce business and we in New York and we're processing orders in New York, then it gets tricky. So what you would do is you would ask New York to let you operate in New York State and it's called a- um, Foreign. A foreign, yeah. Got it. Corporation. No, nah, it's not foreign corporation. It's um, you got in the like foreign entity, yeah. foreign entity status, right? Okay, and and that's how how you get around that. And this is my advice for everybody: a a corp or an LLC is two hundred or less. So if you feel in a way about anyway, just open a new one. Like you know, I'm a big real estate consultant, right? So when people ask me, yo, what should I do? I tell them, don't complicate your life. If you want to do real estate in Philly, just get a Pennsylvania court. Don't complicate your life for $125. You know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of saying the same thing here. You, whatever yeah. state you're doing business in, that's where your entity should be. But then, and I don't think it's apropos for tonight, then you have more savvy people who need anonymity Right. I'm big on that in my mentorship, because the whole purpose of a corp or an LLC is anonymity. You don't want anyone to know who you are. So now we're talking about doing an LLC in Delaware, doing one in Nevada. They're owned by one in Wyoming. And then we flow the money to New York. So if you look at my life, you know, my <laughs> system works a little bit like that. It's just so yeah. nobody can find me. So if somebody falls down the steps in my building and I'm going to sue him for a million dollars, you're going to sue who? Who's the guy? Right. We in Delaware. Now we in Nevada. Now I done gave a lawyer seven thousand. I ain't got no more money. That's the key to anonymity. You're gonna run out of money before you find me. But that's a whole other thing that I'll touch on another evening because I'm passionate about this. I love it. I definitely want to connect with you on that one because I'm dealing yeah. with the receiving end of that. Okay. Yeah. So these, <laughs> these are just ways love to it. protect yourself. That's more in the right. asset protection presentation. Um, but you you'll be fine. With, with the taxes and all that. You'll be fine. Not a big deal. Okay. I have a question uh, because Shavante and I just recently S-corped ourselves and wow. we were very excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, she, she and I are 
a partnership. We're in a partnership. And you were mentioning what banks look at when we apply for funding. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that they look at whether or not we have a mortgage loan, an auto loan, things of the sort. So do they check both our credit? So this is what I tell people. I make it real, real clean and easy. If one of y'all has a stronger credit profile, just run with that person. So let's say you got the 780. Your score is lit. Data points lit. Don't even mention your partner. Go in the bank and get the money. Because again, banks don't know anything. They're not supposed to. How could a banker know corporate law? They don't even teach it in law school. So when you go in there, they want to see, this is what they want to see. They want to see your articles of incorporation. That's one page. They want to see your SS4, which is going to be your EIN number from the IRS. And they want your license. That's it. They can't say, hey, who's your partner here? There's nothing on a corporation. With an LLC, they're going to want to see the operating agreement, which again, if it's partners and one has better credit, I tell them, just put another corp on there as the owner. Go in there and get the money. Now, if y'all both got good credit, my suggestion is both y'all do it on your own going to different banks. When they ask, do you have a partner? No. Okay. That's it. If y'all okay. want to do it together, yes, they check both. You put 50-50. They want the same exact information for both of y'all. Why do I feel that that's not necessary? Because... They're only going to ask one of y'all to sign the personal guarantee anyway. Why let them pull from two profiles when the card is going to be issued and only one is signing personal guarantee? That's why it's better to go to different banks, get as much money as you can, and then invest that money together. We're going to keep the questions going. I'm going to pull the second poll up so you guys can you know, let us know how class was for you. But I have a question because I just went to the bank the other day and we are going to wrap in three minutes just to respect everybody's time. We're going to end at 8 p.m. Um, if you guys do have more questions or you wanted to reach out to Fox, please just uh, we'll send that information in the email and you can connect that way. Um, but I just went to the bank the other day and you're right. The corporation documents didn't have any of our names on it. So then they asked the question and I did say, yeah, my partner, blah, blah, blah. And then that made it, oh, we need the bylaws and we need this and we need right. that. Which again, oh. that's only one bank. Just go to another bank. Don't worry about that. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because there's nothing on it. And let me, again, I like to give y'all the full game. I want to say something too. I had said, she asked, how long your presentation going to be? I said, man, I'm heavy on the questions. I go five, 10 minutes. Meantime, I've been I talking, knew that for, one. An I've been talking knew for an hour. <laughs> but check it out. Back in the day, the only way to get a corporation was through an attorney's office. Oh. So when you, I used to go to the bank, they'd be like, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Rod D. Ramon. Who's Rod D. Ramon? And I'm like, why are y'all acting so? Je- That's a lawyer, bro. He's not a partner. The only name on the document would be the lawyer as the filer. Right. And they, they'd exactly. be trying to trip me up. Like, who's this person? I didn't know that. And that's what they asked. They said, who is that person? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, you just said that's the filer. There's a lawyer's name on there. Okay. Exactly. That was the only way to do it. You just put a, a lot for me. Okay. Yeah. Right. So just go in. That goes for everybody on this call. You go in, you're the 100% owner. You got a partner, send your partner to another bank. Or if the partner has lackluster credit, you just do it. Set. Got you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you all for participating in this poll. Um, I have had my edges snatched. I hope you guys have as well. I hope everybody asked all the questions that they have. We have one more minute. Um, but if you guys do not have any further questions, we will end for the night and just give our Round of applause and special thanks to hey, Mr. Fox. Pena. Hey, it was my pleasure for real. I Thank hope you found really value. You. And, you know, like I said, I'm very pro business. Um, business has allowed me the life that I dreamt of, which is freedom, right? So when I was younger, it was all about the money. I had the Bentley, I had the crib, I had this, I had that. Now it's all about the freedom. And when my kids ask for something, it's not even the thing. 
So that's what I do it for, freedom. I don't punch a clock. I move around the planet. You know, I was in uh, Chicago this morning. I'm in New York right now. I'll be in Vegas next week. That's how I do it. We love, we love, we love to see it. But the part that is the best is that you are about village and community. And that is a Thanks. big thing that the dinner party is about. And so we are so extremely grateful and thankful for this. Um, yeah. yeah. I would say thank you to you for the rest of the night if we stay on here. Listen, so. I just want right. to say one more time. <laughs> I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed at your professionalism. I love everything about what you're doing down to the wordplay. Like I told you on a personal call earlier. So anything I could do to help further y'all I'm in. And I thank you for the opportunity. Real talk. Thank you. Look out for our next event in March y'all. Okay. Yes. Pulling up yes. for the next dinner party in March. It's going to be lit. And thank you. And have you all. All right. Everybody have an amazing night. Be well. Yes. Please be up. safe. God bless. And we'll be Thank in touch. Thank you. Take care, <laughs> y'all. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey, Naima. <laughs> hey, boo. Hey, Naima. I want to say hi to her. If she's there. Okay, let me stop sharing. I'm trying to think uh, of what. Hey. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop recording. Okay, okay. <laughs>